Well, after working as a clairvoyant and medium for the last 20 years, her debut book, Breaking Free, shares her journey and hopes to show others that even in the face of adversity, magic can happen. Please welcome to the cafe, Kerry Marie Callender. Yes. Welcome. welcome. Lovely to have you here. Um, yeah. So congratulations on the book, first of all. Very personal account of how you discovered yes, is, yeah. your abilities. Uh, so, so tell me about how it all came about. Um, it is quite a personal account, to be honest, and I nearly didn't do it. I sort of had, had written the book and it, uh, I thought, I'm not going to do this, it's too personal. But then I realised that unless you actually share your own personal journey, then others can't really, um, you can't help other people. So it's about all the trials and tribulations that I went through to break free, really, to be, live, who I want, live to be who I wanted to be. And so it's encouraging other people to do the same. How did you yeah. know you had the ability to be a psychic medium? I didn't really know at first. Um, I was a um, really deep child, I think, and I was I had a spiritual awareness, but I wasn't sure what it was. And it wasn't until my mid thirties that I actually give my age away now, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, that I actually realised. Um, I, I went to see someone, and she said, "You've got the gift as well." After my father passed over. Right, and you came from a Catholic background as well. Yes, so was I that, did. Was that troublesome? You know, I mean. Just dealing with that? Um, for what I do, probably yes. At the same time, mm. my Catholic religion, I guess, gave me a sense of spirituality from a very young age right. and awareness of something else. So it was sort of quite a good foundation from that point of view. And you've got a spirit guy called Elizabeth, is That's that right? I do. Yes. Tell me about Elizabeth and who is she? Um, I actually, a lot of children have imaginary friends. So I had what I thought was an imaginary friend called, um, I didn't know what her name was at first, but I used to see her from time to time. Um, especially at times when I was quite traumatised or things were quite difficult and she'd sort of, I'd see her. And as I got, I developed as a medium, I found out that her name was Elizabeth and she still visits me from time to time and other people too. How did that help you, help you when you were younger? Um, I think she consoled me. She consoled me a lot and was like a friend. So I felt, felt that I wasn't so lonely and, and someone was there with me. Having a flick through the book before, there's some brilliant accounts of some of the readings that you had, but a question I was wanting to ask was, that, do, you, do you have to filter the information you give to people? You know, at, at times, it depends. If right. I'm doing a public demonstration in front of a lot of people, then I have to be very mindful, because sometimes something might come through. I think that's not really appropriate, but um, if it's somebody that's... You know, I'll, I'll just suss them out, right. depending on each person. The, yeah, a little bit of sussing out, a little bit yeah, of reading the mindful, character. Be mindful, be yeah, mindful. Right. Everybody's mm. different, so every you might not tell everybody everything and other people you would. Depending on what they can cope with. Yeah. Um, do you, you, you actually encourage people in the book to, to follow their own spiritual gifts or to try and extend their own spiritual gifts? So do you think everyone has got it in them to be a psychic medium? I think everybody's got different gifts. So some people are really artistic, some people are really musical, some people are really sporty. For instance, if you try to get to be, be the accountant at my husband's work, um, no one would get paid. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be really upset and so would he. So that wouldn't work. So I'm naturally, some people are more natural than others and some people are more sensitive. So yes, anybody can train, but some would be better than others. Mm. Okay, you probably on the accountants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so you pride yourself on giving some concrete evidence that you are receiving messages. Yes. Um, can you give us an example of what's happened? Of concrete evidence? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that happens all the time. Um, I guess some the most concrete evidence I've ever had was somebody. I think I mentioned it in the book actually, of somebody who had lost someone through suicide. And um, they were really upset because they'd actually had an argument before he took his life. And I didn't know this. And he came through that and had described himself to me in his guitar and told me about the, the um, argument that he had. And he said he was going to do that anyway. So it was huge relief for her. Wow. So it was like really concrete evidence that really empowered and changed someone's life. And what do you think putting the book together was the most gratifying chapter, the one that you took a lot from? Because it's tough writing a book oh, when you mention sure family is. members and stuff. So what's the yeah. one where you sat back and you went, oh, that, that's a weight off my shoulders? I think it was when I had to break free. It's when I talked about I sort of released myself from the bonds that I put on myself. And also I guess that my Catholic fam upbringing was great, but I released myself from being restricted from that mm. and just really living my own story. And I think when I got to that book, when I felt myself elevated, I really enjoyed that part. And when I um, visited the spiritual college in England, Arthur Finney College, I really enjoyed writing that chapter. Oh, there was so much to talk about. That's why you've got to go and just buy the book, honestly. Um, can you pick up anything now from us? Anything going on? Um, both of you? 
Yeah, or you can pick one if you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's <the> stronger? <laughs> um, well, I'll go th first with Mel. Mm -hmm. um, I get a sense for you um, that there's um, lots of questions you're asking yourself at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and you're making some decisions at the moment as well. You're not quite sure of the way forward. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are financial, actually, as oh, well. As always, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm getting a sense that you're um, yeah, going to make some tough decisions there, but I, I, I think that... Um, It'll all fall into place. I always so get a sense you want to do something around your house or your home, want to spend money on that. Does that make sense to you? Yes. <laughs> Finish the renovations. And Mike. <laughs> yeah, that would, and also your dad, your dad passed. Yes. Yes, because I can feel him around you, and he's just such a lovely, lovely man. He, he, he is. He really enjoys mm. you. He's really, he really, really thinks you're something. <laughs> and do you understand the name John? Yes, that's yeah. my dad's name. name. Yeah, okay. So um, he just loves you so much, and he's telling you to get out in the garden a bit more. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> okay. Oh, what a beautiful gift you have, and so awesome you share it with people as well. You can find out more with Kerry Marie's debut book, Breaking Free. It's available now on Amazon, or you can visit her website, which you can see on screen. <laughs>